Hello, I'm here today at Low Gray School to find out whether there really is a bug's life on Mars. I'm here today to interview a student who decided to research into this topic for their extended project qualification. So, Warren, what was your extended project qualification on? Uh, my extended project qualification was on to what extent life on Mars is possible. So, figuring out why Earth is the only inhabitable planet and like why not Mars because it's considered in a way a sister planet for Earth. So I, what I did research on why we can't live on there and like to what extent life on there would be possible. What encouraged you to pick this topic? Well ever since like in year 10 I've always had like a strong interest in Mars and like why we couldn't move on to that if it's considered such a good planet with so many good resources. So ever since I got into sixth form and I find out that um, I could do an extended project qualification on and do research on a topic of my choosing, I decided to choose this so that I could finally have the questions that I'd had about Mars answered. What have you found out about life on Mars? Well, I found out that the conditions on there, even though they might be considered similar to Earth in some ways, they're, at the moment they're not capable of ha inhabiting like our human race on there because it's still too cold, like the temperatures on there are not suitable for human life or any other life except for microbial growth. So things like microbacteria are the only kind of, kinds of organisms that can survive on there. And that would be the extreme of ours that can survive under the harshest of pressures. So how did you do your research on this? Well, I had to use a lot of resources. I had to read a lot of books regarding Mars and other planets. And when I was doing my research, I was doing some research online, I stumbled upon a, uh, an article by a professor from the Open University. and. When I found out that we, could, we were going to the Open University to use some of their resources to help us complete our extended projects, I did that and I found out that she was working there so I decided to email her and get in contact with her, see if she could help me on anything and she's, she got in touch and she sent me a couple of articles and I had a phone, talk, phone chat with her and she talked to me about all the research that I had that they had done on Mars and other planets and she sent me the articles that they had used or that they had written as in regards to Mars and its life inhabitants. How helpful was that and what skills did you gain from it? Oh, it was very helpful because I ended up uh, quoting a lot of uh, some of the articles that they had already written and using in some of the other ideas and other research that's been done by other scientists as well regarding the matter. So I feel like in the whole extended project some of the experiences and things that I learned to do were good research skills, uh, just communication skills were important when talking to the professor from the OU and other things like being able to stay ahead of my work because it, it would we had to produce a 5,000 word essay at the end so I had to make sure I stayed on top of my work if I was going to produce a good grade out of it. Would you recommend this qualification and what tips would you give for other students in the future? Oh, I would definitely recommend this because it was an experience that I didn't expect to get to be able to actually work with a professor that specializes in a topic that I'd been interested in and doing it was just a really good experience for me. I really enjoyed it whilst I was doing it. The tips I would give to anyone who is willing to do this is make sure you can manage your time correctly because if you don't stay ahead of your work, you're going to fall behind and you won't be able to produce a good extended project. Uh, you need to pick a topic that really interests you because you can't pick a topic that anyone else kind of put on you because you won't feel as invested in it. You have to do something that you feel really invested in and are willing to do for the rest of your year because it's pretty much just you and your research producing a 5,000 word essay at the end. And I think those are the two main tips I would give to someone who wants to start a new one. All right, Warren, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you. 
Every student during the EPQ requires some form of support by teachers at their local school. At Lord Grey, this is Penny Green. Penny, you teach the EPQ. Would you mind telling me what it's about? I'd be delighted. The EPQ is called the Extended Project Qualification. It's an extended piece of work which is conducted at AS level. It takes about a year to do and it is a project which means this is a piece of independent research which is conducted by our students on any topic that they like, that we approve of and that they're not actually studying for their AS or A levels or other uh, level 3 subjects. Um, it's a qualification because it gives them an AS level which they can get to A star which is quite unusual because most ASs now only go up to a grade A. Um, and it is aimed at helping them to do independent research where they go, they look for resources, they then uh, select, discriminate between different resources and then produce an outcome which will be a conclusion to a question that they are asking. How did you go about supporting Warren with his project? Well when Warren first came to me with the title of his project I have to say that I wasn't as supportive as I might have been because I honestly thought he was planning to look at something to do with aliens and horror films and stuff like that because I had understood that life on Mars was probably not a possibility. I'm not um, a scientist and I think that's one of the features of EPQ that the person who's, who supervises does not have to be an expert. They can't be an expert in every field. So I didn't quite know what to do and then the OU um, very kindly stepped in uh, and also I received information from the board that actually there was proper research into life on Mars. I explained this to Rick who'd come in from the OU and he was able to put us in touch with Karen who was actually overseeing uh, Tim Peake and the Enterprise to um, space. Interestingly the day that we actually managed to make communication with Karen was the actual day that Tim Peake went into space and she had to put him on hold while she spoke to the news cameras. So that kind of uh, brought us into some prominence and also gave Warren, I think, an added sort of fillet to do his work. Um, after that, it was a question of when he brought me resources, just looking at them to make sure that um, he understood how to validate and how to check for reliability how to check that they were current, how to check that they were appropriate, but he did the work. Why did you feel it was important to get Karen involved? Well, we were very lucky. We had somebody right on our doorstep who was an expert in this field. And we've been encouraging our students right from the beginning to actually look for the experts in their field. Uh, I have somebody at the moment who's doing some work on Freud and she's in touch with the Freud Museum, she's been down there, she's got help from them. I think it's vital that students understand that there is an academic parameter to all of this and that there are experts who they can consult. So when she became available uh, and she was willing to help, it was brilliant. It worked really well for all of us. I didn't understand most of what Warren was talking about, but she did and between them they produced a brilliant project. Thanks Penny. You're very welcome. I'm joined now by Dr. Karen Olson Francis. Karen is a lecturer at the Open University. She also helped Warren with his extended project qualification. So Karen, what are extremophiles? On Earth, microbes are ubiquitous. For example, there's microbes all in this rock. But extremophiles are a specific sort of microorganisms which have adapted to live in extreme environments. So what about them do we already know? We know that they can live in volcanoes, we know that they can live in Antarctica, we've isolated them from loads of environments that are really extreme um, and we know the basic biochemistry. Why are they significant in finding out about life on other planets? We need to understand the limits of life before we can start looking elsewhere in the universe. So once we're starting to get lots more data about environments that could potentially be habitable on other planets, so now we can use the information that we know about extreme avals to see if life is actually possible. How do you study them? So what we do is we go to lots of extreme environments, for example from a hot pool, and we isolate microorganisms, and then we bring them back to the lab and we start to look at their physiology to see how they actually survive in these environments. And what got you into studying extreme environments? 
Well, extremophiles are kind of like the superheroes in the microbial world. So if you're going to study microbes, you kind of want to look for the most extreme, and that's how I got into looking at extremophiles. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. So there we have it. Warren decided to do his extended project qualification on extremophiles. If you were to do it, what would you decide to do it on? 